how to classify matter. This is very important because when we are talking about matter, it's very broad. Okay? Sobrang lawak. It's very vast. So, we need to classify them. How to classify them? So, we have the matter flowchart. So, at the upper part, we have matter. As you can see there, the, there's a question. Can it be physically separated? If yes, that's a mixture. If no, that is pure substance. So, we are going to tackle first the no part, okay? Which cannot be separated by physical means. Meaning to say, you cannot, uh, what do you call this? You cannot separate them by using your hands, okay? Using your hands or using a tool by your hands, something like that. Meaning to say that this substance can only be separated by, you know, by, uh, what do you call this? Heating, something like that. And also by electricity, okay? And by chemical means. So, we have pure substance and under pure substance, can it be chemi chemically decomposed? If yes, that's compound. If it is not, that's element, okay? Let's go. So, in matter flow chart, here are the examples. We have graphite, which is made up of carbon. That is an element. Pepper, which is a hetero mixture. Pepper, you know, uh, in Tagalog, that's uh, paminta, okay? Sugar which is the asukal or sucrose in uh, science, that's a compound. And paint, that is a hetero mixture because paint has the, you know, the liquid part and the, the liquid paint part and uh, something like white liquid on the top of it that you need to mix before you use it, okay? And then the soda, which is homo or considered, homo means homogeneous, which is considered as solution, okay? Okay, so pure substance is divided into two. We have elements that is composed of only one kind of atom, while compound has two or more the same or different kind of atoms. See? So compound has composed of different kinds or types of elements together. So the elements are usually can be seen in the periodic table of elements. So are you familiar with that? Yes, yeah, so... Always remember to bring your periodic table with you. It is very important when you are going to study chemistry, okay? So I will show an example of a periodic table. So let's tackle element first under pure substances. Okay, element is composed of only one kind of atom. There are 118 elements that are known and there are 5 newly discovered elements. So as you can see in the periodic table, there are all... Uh, what do you call it? There are also blank parts, okay, on the lower part because there are also chemi chemicals or elements rather that is not yet been discovered. Maybe one day you can discover it. You will not know, right? Okay, so example we have Cu or a copper that is made up of copper. Okay, the copper wire is made up of copper and then Al is the aluminum foil which is uh, composed of aluminum. It may be metals, non-metals, and metalloids. So those are the three types of elements. We have metals, non-metals, and metalloids. So, let's talk about elements. Under elements, we have metals. Metals has the characteristics of being malleable or malleability turned into thin sheets. That is why you can transform your metals into a very thin sheet like your roof, okay? Then, it has a thermal and electrical conduction, allow electricity and heat to flow. Ductility can be stretched into thin wires. And then, we have lustrous or shiny, okay? When we are talking about metals, it's shiny, okay? So, we have non-metals, the second one, which is considered as dull, meaning to say not shiny. Brittle, it can be easily broken. Poor conductor of heat and electricity. Okay. And then we have the last part, which is metalloids. It has the characteristics of both metals and non-metals. That is used in electronics as semiconductors. Next, we have compounds, which is composed of two or more elements in a fixed ratio. Properties differ 
from those of individual elements. Example, we have table salt, which is sodium chloride, composed of sodium and chlorine gas. Sodium is a metal and chlorine is a gas. Okay, so we have one sodium and then one chlorine. Together, we have sodium chloride, which is the table salt. And then we have another example, carbon and oxygen. Okay, carbon, one carbon and one oxygen can produce carbon monoxide, while one carbon and two oxygen can produce carbon dioxide. See? It differs in ratio, right? So if it is carbon monoxide, one is to one. If it is carbon dioxide, the ratio is one is to two. Okay. So, we're done with elements. We can now proceed to compounds which are the type of it, acid, base, and so on. So, compounds can be organic, means with carbon atoms, and inorganic means without carbon atoms. So, when we are talking about organic substances, these are the substances that has carbon on its composition. While inorganic, these are the substances that has not or they do not have carbon in their composition. So under compounds, we have acids, bases, and salts. Acids usually corrosive, sour in taste, and odor, and always red in color in liquid paper. Those are indicators. Okay, they are like a red paper, a, little, a very thin red paper, and a very thin blue paper. Bases are slippery, bitter, scented, and always blue in color, which is the litmus paper. And we have salts that is crystallized solids. It's like, you know, our salt, the rock salt that is uh, salt. The, those are crystals. Okay, so example of acids are vinegar, citric acid, which is, can be found in sour fruits, Muriatic acid, so usually you can identify acid immediately because it has the name acid at the end of the name of it. And then we have bases. An example of these are we have medicine tablets, soaps, and shampoos. That is why when you taste your shampoos or your soaps, it tastes bitter. And even your tablets, okay? Tablets, your medicine tablets. Okay, because those are bases. So, Let's talk about acids. What does pH scale show? So pH is very important when it comes to acids and bases because pH determines whether the substance is acidic or basic. pH means power of hydrogen. The pH scale runs from 1 to 14. The numbers 1 to 6 represents acidic condition and 8 to 14 represents alkali conditions and the pH value of 7 is neutral meaning to say in the middle okay so those are the different uh, fruits or objects that is considered to be acidic neutral and basic so as you can see the water is at 7 so water is neutral okay so when your water goes downward it will become acidic okay it will now acidic and your water go up from 8 to 14 it's basic it's that's not not water anymore okay so the pH scale runs from 1 to 14 1 to 6 represents as we all know is from 1 to 6 is acidic condition 8 to 14 is basic condition because there are acids that can be strong acid which are the acids that can be from 1 to 3. Okay, that those are strong acids. And weak acids can be on our way to 5, 6, something like that. 6.9, okay? And there are also strong bases and weak bases. Okay? Those weak bases are in 8, 9, something like that, on the way to 10. And uh, the strong base are in 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, those are the very strong bases. So we have weak acid, we have strong acid, and we also have weak base, and we also have strong base. Okay, always remember that. 
So, compounds, here, bases, acids can be determined or can be detected by an indicator with the use of the following materials. So, these are the indicators that we can identify that the substance is acidic or not. Okay? So, we have the first one, the litmus paper. If it is red, turns to blue, okay, meaning to say the substance is base, while the blue litmus paper turns into red, therefore, the substance is acidic, okay? So, those are the blue and red litmus paper. While the universal litmus paper can change its color up to like red, orange, yellow, uh, blue, violet, okay, green. Uh, so, it can, uh, it can uh, portray the different colors in the pH scale. So, from 1 to 6, as you can see, it changes the color, right? On the way to 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, it can portray in the universal litmus paper. Okay? Then, we have the red cabbage. Yung pulang, kinatawag natin na repolyo. Pulang repolyo. Yan yung red cabbage lang kinatawag. So, kukunin nyo yung katas niyan. Pwede nyo i-blender or pwede nyo kakuluan, something like that, para makuha nyo yung red uh, substance sa kanya. And then, yung tinatawag natin kamote tops yung talbos ng kamote okay yung red ha yung red kamote tops and then we have hibiscus flower or tinatawag natin gumamela so you need to get the extract in the color of the flower and then we can use it as indicator okay you know that ha you can do it we will experiment about this acids and bases so watch out guys I know that you are excited because colors are very interesting. So, by acids and bases, it can show you different colors. Okay? Now, let's talk about salt. So, in salt, is an ionic compound that has a cation other than hydrogen ion and an anion other than OH or hydroxide ion and is obtained along with water in the neutralization reaction between acids and bases. So, when you neutralize acids to base, salt will form. Okay, for an instance, we have sodium chloride, one of the best known salt in the world because there are a lot of salts in the world. But the sodium chloride, that's very famous. Okay, I know you have it at home, right? So, we can now proceed. So, there are uh, laws in uh, chemistry, especially in matter. We have the law of definite composition and law of multiple proportion. And we have the law of, what do you call this? Conservation of matter. The law of conservation of matter and energy. Okay, first, let us talk about law of definite composition. A given compound always contains the same fixed ratio of elements. Okay, so when we are talking about carbon monoxide, it's only one carbon and one oxygen. Carbon dioxide, it is only composed of one carbon and two oxygens. Okay, so law of multiple proportions. Elements can combine in different ratios to form different compounds like the carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide. See, the same carbon, the same oxygen, but different in ratio and then different forms. Okay? And then we have the law of conservation of matter, which is considered to be matter cannot be created nor be destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed like energy. Okay? I know that you are very bright. I have a very bright class, huh? So, for an instance, two different compounds, each has definite composition, remember? The carbon and the oxygen thing. Okay, so uh, to sum up about elements and compounds, element is one atom only, while compounds is two or more different or the same atoms. So we have in element, we have gold, which is Au, hydrogen, H, silicon, Si, silver, Ag, oxygen, O, lithium, Li. And then we have compounds. We have salt, NaCl, Water H2O, oxygen gas O2, 
carbon monoxide CO, carbon dioxide CO2, ammonia NH3. See how do they differ from one to another? So these are the pure substances, element and compound. Okay? Next, we are going to tackle about the...